It is the new year and everybody is taking stock of their health. They want to get healthy, but let's be honest, right? For the past few weeks, the past few months, you may have been binging on all things unhealthy. It starts at Thanksgiving with the enormous dinner and then you've got the sweets and treats that carry you all the way past the holidays into the new year. And now you're feeling, ugh, you're feeling blah. And maybe, you know, you need to detox a little bit. You need to get that reset as you start your new health journey here in the new year. And so we have the perfect person to talk about how to overcome those holiday binges and getting your body right to get healthy in this new year. She is the plant-based dietitian. She is the creator of the Choose You Now Diet, which by the way, now available in paperback, the Choose You Now Diet and Kindle version that is released on Amazon. We've got a link to that in the show description, the episode notes right now. Please welcome Juliana Hover to the Exam Room Podcast. It is so good to see you, Juliana. So good to see you, Chuck. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk detox. Let's talk binging. Uh, my goodness gracious, this time of year, I think everybody's kind of been on a binger. I, when you're getting ready to start doing this new diet, and I'm going to put that in quotes because we're going to talk about the difference between dieting and actually eating a diet. But anyway, how important is it that you hit that reset button before you get going on your health journey? It is so important. And I always like to take out all the guilt and shame and regret from the past because there's nothing you could do about it now. But what I love about right now is that we could get to choose again. And that's the whole concept of choose you now. It's that you could begin right now. And so it doesn't matter what happened in the past, you start now and you have this new frame of mind. If you're feeling like you said, ugh, or blah, now is a good time to start again and find your favorite foods and go either start from scratch or go back to what was your healthy on plan way of eating prior to the holidays or throughout the holidays, however you were, just start again now. So when we're talking about starting again, right? So I think that when you, you, you've been binging, you've been eating, and what we've learned here, there's this emerging science, and certainly I can speak to this from experience, and there have been other guests on the show who talk about this a lot too, is that you've been eating a lot of stuff that can be really kind of addictive, right? You physically get hooked on these things. And while I was at the extreme and the you know experience might differ from person to person, how difficult is it by and large to really, when you're detoxing, to also kind of break that unhealthy addiction that we have to certain foods? Well, I always like to remind my clients that it's not you. It, it, you're not broken. It's always the food. And like you're saying, there are some foods that are more addictive chemically. I mean, these foods that have lots of oils and sugars and salts and flours are easy to overeat because they light up your brain and you get this beautiful dopamine hit and it feels good because we are biological beings that were adapted in times of scarcity. So we needed to look for high calorie dense foods and eat as much of it as possible so that when there were times of scarcity, we would survive. So it's basically a survival instinct that we all have. And then the problem is that there are no times of scarcity anymore and you can get anything delivered to your door from anywhere, any time of the day, any day of the week. So it's a whole new world and we have not adapted there yet. And so it's not you, you know, you're constantly faced with temptation after temptation and it's normalized. So everyone's constantly eating hyper palatable foods. In fact, you're the odd person out. If you say no, you're, you're the, oh, you don't want to indulge with us. You don't want to have fast food or dessert or whatever fill in the blank food is and you become ousted from the tribe. So there's another psychosocial component that I think may be even more dominating than that biological drive where you don't wanna be ousted from the tribe. You wanna fit in, you wanna feel like part of the, the family, the group. And so we're bombarded with messages and temptations and it's really challenging to live in this world and make healthy choices all the time. You are not lying. Let's just dissect that. And we're we're gonna put a we're we're just gonna hit that that stop button and we're gonna dig deep on this one because you just hit the nail on the head. So often I get asked, well, how do you deal with these social situations? How do you go out to eat with the family? How do you deal with that annoying aunt who says, Well, just eat a little bit of this? It's not gonna hurt you. And you're right, you do feel this inherent need to fit in. Nobody wants to be excluded, right? Everybody Everybody wants to feel like they belong. 
And for whatever reason, even when well-intentioned, people put the pressure on you when it comes to eating certain foods. So how does somebody really go about navigating what can be quite choppy waters? It's so, it's such a good question. I've been constantly evolving this conversation, which is exactly what this new book is about, is dealing with everyone else. Because even the most well-intentioned person or the most knowledgeable person, me, I've been teaching this for 17 years and I still get into social situations where I'm like, oh, how do I get out of this? It's challenging. So basically you have to want it. I've realized that the way I say it is that you could lead a human to healthy, but you can't make them eat. You have to want it more than anything. You have to want it more than that temptation. You have It has to mean something really deep and personal to you, no matter what it is, whether it means you want to be healthy for your grandchildren, or you want to play on the floor with your children, or you want to you know, fit into your bikini in the summer. There's no right or wrong, good or bad, superficial or deep reason, whatever resonates for you. And so in those moments, when you have that temptation being flashed at you and saying, come on, why aren't you doing this? You have to go back to why Why do I feel better if I don't? Why do I choose? What do I choose right now? There's constantly going to be these forks in the road where you get to decide, do I want this or do I want that? And the why has to be stronger than that temptation. And you're going to have to practice it again and again and again and again. The good news is that the more you practice it, the healthier you eat, the healthier your diet is, as you know so well, the better you feel. And when you feel fabulous and you your health is great and your labs look wonderful, it's a self-fulfilling, beautiful kind of cycle where you want to continue and maintain that. So it's kind of like this self, you just the more you do it, the more you want it, the more easy it is to stay on plan. And when you go off plan after maybe doing it for a while and being on this healthy way of eating and you have one deviation, you'll feel, you'll remember, ooh, this really doesn't feel good. And so you get that reminder. But what I always teach all my clients and my audiences is that it doesn't matter. Even if you go off, all that matters is that you start again. So we're all going to go off. We're all going to have a Thanksgiving meal. We're all going to have one treat that we indulge in once here and there. And that's fine. What matters most is the preponderance of your diet. What do you eat day to day most of the time? And all that matters is if you have that one treat, you go, okay, that was, and you should enjoy it. I call it a day of deliciousness. Enjoy every bite, taste it, have fun, celebrate it. And then you get back to your plan. And of course, I want your plan to be delicious food anyway, so that you're not miserable all the time. It's just something that's your regular way of eating delicious and nutritiously. All right. Now this is a, this is a conversation that I love because I, you know, for me, I view that a little bit differently, but I know what works for me and what works for me may not work for you or for anyone else for that matter. Uh, the day of deliciousness for me is terrifying because I was such a food addict eating 10,000 calories a day. God only knows how many grams of fat, right? Could not go a single day without going to the drive through a number of times. And so I always fear, Juliana, that if I were to have a day of deliciousness, it would be no different than somebody celebrating, you know, 13 years of sobriety by having a beer, right? It's a really slippery slope. So how does somebody kind of recognize where they fall in that kind of temptation spectrum, as I like to put it? I love that you asked me that, Chuck, and I love that you shared that. Thank you. It's what's so interesting is that I want people to feel like it's doable. So I tell everyone as a broad scope audience is that everyone could do this, it, what works for you. And I always help my clients find what works for them. I know for me, my palate completely shifted. I'm wondering if this happened to you. Uh, oh yeah. Like there are things I eat today that are like nowhere to be found on the version 1.0 menu. No doubt about it. Exactly. Me too. And so for me, a day of deliciousness is something that would still be considered super healthy. In fact, my family thinks I'm like annoying because I always want, I want those healthy foods. <laughs> I crave those healthy foods. I when I, on my birthday, I don't want cake. I want to have my, another serving of whatever food I'm eating. It's just, I love healthy food. And I think that I see that I don't think, I know I've seen this now with hundreds of clients that I've worked with one-on-one -on -one, and I've heard this from thousands of people that have transitioned to a whole food plant-based diet and they want to eat healthy food. So the good news is a day of deliciousness for me looks quite different than what it would have looked like for version 1.0 of anyone that's been eating a standard Western diet. But um, it, it's all relative, right? It's all compared to what is the question not asked often enough. All right. Now, here's something that doesn't get talked about often enough either, is that I also think that when you talk about, um, you know, having that day of deliciousness and you're, you haven't yet started the diet or 
let me put that in quotes. Um, automatically, the way that I translated that when I was the old me and still doing the whole yo-yo diet thing was that now I have permission to go back to eating my unhealthy ways, right? I can go right back to that. Let me just go through hell and torture here for a few weeks, lose some weight. And then as a reward for that, I will be able to indulge in that. So I'm kind of giving myself permission ahead of time. And again, what works for me now is not to do that. But looking back, I also feel like I was setting myself up to fail knowing that, you know, I'm basically circling a date on my calendar for when I could go back through the Taco Bell menu. So I guess, uh, or go back through the Taco Bell drive through So I guess my question is, you know, how does one kind of view what your rewards are going to be as you're going down this healthier journey? Like, is somebody truly shooting themselves in the foot by saying, hot diggity, I'm going to have that German chocolate cake on January 31st? I think so. I, I definitely think so. I think that you need to transition it to a wholer diet and know that there's this period of time where it's not going to hit light up your brain like those other foods. And there's an adjustment period for sure. But this is where you have to focus on the why. And that's what I have all my clients. The first thing they do is I want them to spend some real quality time. If you deep dive into why you want this and, and what does it look like for you? What does it look like to be free of food addiction and cravings and that vicious cycle of, of feeling horrible and the, the guilt and shame and all the stuff, the horrible self-talk that we do. Identify why you want it. Because if you don't, there's nothing I could say. I, I For, I don't know, the be beginning of my career, I would try to convince my clients, no, 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 you have to eat this way. It's so beneficial. And it's going to, I was just trying to convince everyone. And I realized it was, why wasn't I being so effective? And I realized it's because people have to want it. So you, no matter what you have to want it, because it is a transition, but, um, I don't believe in cheat days, quote unquote cheat days, because I want you to enjoy your food. So the goal is to find really delicious food that is health promoting, doesn't light up your brain in the same way, but feels good. And you get all of the wonderful side effects and benefits of, of being healthy. But now I think that, you know, maybe scaring a lot of people like, oh, my God, they're so extreme or, you know, Chuck is so extreme. We just can't be doing this kind of nonsense. But here, here's the fun part is like the thing that you know all too well when it comes to a plant based diet is that there are ways to enjoy the favorite foods that you have been eating your entire life in much healthier forms that also taste as good as you've always had, you know, so I use the German chocolate cake, for example, but you're a dietitian, you deal in food all the time. I mean, you're a recipe curator. Um, that's one of the many hats that you wear. So, you know, if somebody wants that German chocolate cake, but they are hell bent on staying true to the healthy plant-based diet, that can absolutely happen. Can it not? Completely. And this is what I love to say is that you could healthify any recipe, any recipe. And you know, I was I was trained in school, you know, anatomy, physiology, statistics, food science, chemistry, blah, 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 all that stuff, biochem. And when I got out and I started my practice 17 years ago and I was asked to write my first book and I'm like, OK. And so I had six weeks to write the complete idiot's guide to plant based nutrition. And and I had two babies and they said, oh, and 50 recipes. And I went, what? Recipes? I don't know how to make recipes. I'm not a chef. I was never trained that. And I had to teach myself how to cook. And this was before, you know, the internet was what it is today. And this is way back when, and well, it was 11 years ago. So things have changed a lot. And there was not, weren't plant-based recipe books. There weren't a lot of them. There were some vegan recipe books that I had had as staples, but I taught myself how to cook, fell in love with cooking. And it was, you know, you just have to learn a few different tweaks. But what's so amazing is that 10, 11 years after I wrote that book, there are now at your fingertips, quite literally hundreds of thousands of whole food plant-based recipes, whatever you want, just type in whole food plant-based German chocolate cake, whole food plant-based uh, lasagna, whatever it is that you've been craving and you'll find so many versions of it. And then you learn how to kind of, like you're saying, curate the recipes and, and modify things. There's anything could be modified, but also these recipes already exist. So I always tell everyone to start with the recipe. A recipe is a template. It doesn't have to be exactly as the recipe suggests, but it's also someone's already done it for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So basically anything you could eat, we could eat healthier.
<laughs> and tell me if this has happened uh, with the clients who you've worked with, right? Um, they didn't have a sweet tooth before they adopted the whole food plant-based diet. But then once they learned that they could do that, they could have, you know, completely healthy whole food plant-based brownies, like they're all in and they love these things. And it's kind of like, it's a healthy indulgence that carries zero guilt. Do you have clients? You're talking about an evolving palate who, like I said, just now all of a sudden have a sweet tooth because they're eating healthier. I have to say, Chuck, I've worked with hundreds of people and that has never happened. <laughs> really? Yeah, no. What I see is the opposite. I Well, here's my, but here's the caveat. Here's the pitfall of whole food plant, even plant-based. It's the term plant-based because whole food kind of eliminates this problem. In 17 years as a dietitian, it's only the last three, four, five where I have a vegan people coming to me that have been on a vegan diet for a long time and they are having, they are presenting with the same health issues as the omnivores because in the markets, in the, at the restaurants now, plant base has come to mean you could do anything. So burgers and cookies and candies and everything is available plant-based and then it has a health halo attached to it. So that when I look at their food journals, lo and behold, you know, these people that have high blood pressure and high cholesterol and, you know, still struggling with their weight or whatever, these things that I never saw on a vegan diet with my clients, they're having that because of all these processed foods. So I'm always trying to manage people getting them to stick to the whole food and not just because it's, it's plant-based doesn't necessarily mean it's healthy anymore. That changed a lot. All right, yeah, so I guess it should have been a little more clear. When I'm talking about vegan brownies, I'm talking about the ones that are made, you know, with like black beans and you sneak those in there and they're whole food and that really kind of like thickens them up and makes it a nice hearty brownie. Um, not necessarily the things that you would pick up in the grocery store, but that is a really good point uh, that should be made as people are exploring the idea of going vegan or eating a plant-based diet is just because something is vegan does not necessarily mean that it's the healthiest option. Right. And I, I think I understood what you meant about the brownies. And I think it's a wonderful option. But most people are, are still adjusting from like the regular brownies. And so they, they would appreciate it. But I haven't yet seen someone all of a sudden go, oh, I can have brownies. I want brownies. But I can see <laughs> what that would happen. I understand why you would say that. Um, to that end, like what, you know, what is your thought on these ultra processed vegan foods. Um, I've heard them referred to as being transition foods. I can kind of see it in that manner. And you obviously would want to graduate to healthier options beyond that. But as somebody is going from eating that standard Western diet, a lot of fat, a lot of drive through nights to the plant-based diet, do you see um, a benefit in these ultra processed foods as a stepping stone, or would you just recommend just kind of like a bandaid, just rip it right off and go uh, full bore with the whole food plant-based? It's such a good question. And I've always said that it's, you know, they could be transition foods because the question is always compared to what? So of course, a plant-based cheese that made out of nuts is better than dairy because dairy is probably one of the worst things you could put in your body. So compared to what is the most important question? But I do want people to transition and, and start to shift their palate. So I always offer my clients the two options because I think there's people that love to dive in cold tofu, go all the way, just rip the Band-Aid off, and they could be successful as long as they do their homework and they're prepared and they're ready for it. Then it's going to be a little uncomfortable for a few days, but any major life transition, especially related to something as deeply personal and deeply socialized as food. Food is everything, right? We socialize, we celebrate, we mourn, we entertain with everything is based on food. So if you're, if you want to dive in and go for it, I think that it's great. But then there are some people that really want to transition. I myself had to transition. I started when I was a teenager and it took me many, many years to really get all the information to feel comfortable to really start, you know, slipping into this way of eating. And, um, and of course it stuck for me, but the research seems to show that it sticks more when you tiptoe in but I think that there are certain personalities where they just want to go all the way in and then they get the benefits right away and then their palate shifts faster. So I see both methods being uh, helpful, just depending on the person. All right. Now let's, uh, that kind of brings us back to what we were talking about at the top is during that transition, you almost go through that detox, that reset period. Um, for me, it was really intense. You know, I famously tell the story about my third day without Taco Bell and literally punching my fist through a wall because I was freaking out because I wasn't getting my fix. 
Um, what is happening inside a person, you know, when that is happening, like why is their brain raging out of control and how are they changing physically on the inside while they are raging on the outside? Great question. So many things are happening. I mean, oh, so many things. It's chemistry, right? We are chemistry. Like we are bio biological beings and we're talking about these dopamine hit that lights up our brain and feels good. So when we take it away, it's an addictive response. It's a similar, like similar to like a, like a drug response like, or coming off of alcohol, but maybe not as intense for most people. But for some people, if you're eating a super, super rich diet, a very, um, like you're describing, it's like you're not getting your drugs. And so there's a whole thing that's happening inside your brain with serotonin and dopamine and all of those hormones. So there's, there's an actual response going on in your body, in your brain. And so of course those things can be expected. But then there's also what happens is, you know, you're going, it'll adjust. Your body's amazing at homeostasis. Our bodies are absolutely magnificently brilliant and incredible what, what our bodies are capable of withstanding and how we evolve. And what I find so fascinating is this study that is this, um, what's evolving in the microbiology world, like the microbiome and everything where we're learning, like we're at the tip of the iceberg with what we know about the microbiome, but it is so fascinating the data that's coming out of there. Like, you know, when you eat, every time you eat, it shifts your microbiome and the different profile, the different bacteria, the healthy, health promoting bacteria, and that gets rid of some of the pathogenic bacteria. And you're constantly evolving. We're constantly evolving every day. Our, you know, our bone cells are shifting. Everything is shifting in our bodies. Our palates are literally changing over. Our cells turn over. So it's so empowering to think about that we can we can navigate that with what we put on our plate, what we put in our body. I always say that the world is so chaotic. You know, there's so much that we can't control in the world, almost nothing that we can have full control over in life. One thing we have control over is what we eat, especially when you eliminate these really hyper, hyper palatable foods that almost take over, right? Because it's a chemistry thing and it's hitting your brain in a certain way. So if you take that stuff out and you eat more of these wholesome foods, everything shifts in your body and it just it's just, it keeps going. It's this beautiful, positive, vicious cycle in a good way. Yeah. I love the point that you made about control. That's such a powerful thing here. And I honestly think that for a lot of people, when it is completely hitting the fan, life is nothing but chaos for them. That actually may be the very best time to dive into cleaning up your health, starting with what it is that you eat. Because while you can't control anything else that's going on around you and you just feel like the world is coming apart, you can control what it is that you're putting into your body. You can control your health. And because that's the only control you feel like you have at that time, you hyper-focus on it, man, and you hit a home run like you could not believe. You think that that's accurate? I do. I really do. I've seen it so many times. I think what happens is like we saw this with this whole what's happened over the last couple of years. Some people chose to, well, this is a good opportunity for me to really focus on my health. And they did. And they changed their diet and they started exercising or whatever it was, meditation, and they saw improvements. And then there's a people that say, uh, it's like the, the apocalyptic view. It's like, uh, forget it. It doesn't matter anyway. And they went down the other path. So I, but I've seen so many people turn around their lives. I've seen extraordinary things that I was not taught possible in grad school. I was not shown or led to believe in any way, shape or form that someone could get off of medication, let alone, you know, I mean, literally cure their disease, like be, take a diagnosis away. Like that has never, that was never taught. It was once you have a diagnosis and medication, the goal of the dietitian and the healthcare practitioner is to prevent it from worsening, prevent it from increasing the dosage of medication. And yet I've seen people get off medication. I always say results are typical. I, it's mind blowing what I've seen in people over the years, watching them just shifting their diet, just the diet alone, because diet is the most important part. It is extraordinary how much power we have. And instead of looking at it like, a, ah, forget it, doesn't matter anyway, I feel like it's a very empowering message that you can make these shifts by your choices. 
results are typical. Man, if every disclaimer was like that, man, this world would be a completely different place. Um, as we kind of begin to wrap up here, I think uh, I, I want to ask you, because we do get asked this a lot on the show as well, um, about these cleansing drinks, right? So a lot of people will swear by, well, if I put like 10 lemons in my water and I drink those really lemony drinks three times a day for an entire week, that's how I cleanse my system. Does somebody need to like drink those kinds of crazy concoctions in order to really get a proper cleanse here? Or can you go about it in a much easier and perhaps even healthier fashion? A hundred percent. It's it's what you eat overall. And there is no magic food. There's definitely the most health promoting foods. You know, I'm a big lover of leafy green and cruciferous vegetables and hummus should be a food group and all those things. But there's no food that's going to magically make everything you did in the past go away or erase what you do following that beverage, for instance. So no, it's what you do overall. It's the preponderance of your day. It's your day-to-day -day in and out. That's what matters. It, and it's what you take out and what you put in. That's what the magic is. It's like if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet and you're focusing your diet on vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, mushrooms, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices, and infinite tasty combinations. And by doing that, you're also eliminating the animal products, the highly processed foods, all the things that are disease promoting. It's kind of this win-win situation. There is no magic supplement or drink or one food that if you eat it, it will erase everything else. So you have to be consistent and and you have to make a major life transition to see the major life transition results. And what is your message to somebody who's like, look, I love hamburgers. I love pizza. I love cheeseburgers. I love fried chicken. And there's no way I could ever possibly go without those types of foods. So I'm not even going to entertain the idea of eating a plant-based diet. When you have a client whose heels are dug in like that, how does that conversation tend to go? Well, like I said, the first few years as a dietitian, I would try, I would try to show studies and research and inspire and inspiring stories and everything in my power. And I realized it doesn't matter what I say, they have to want it. They have to want it. So what I would say, if they wanted my advice and they were asking my advice, I'd say, just eat more plants, get more delicious recipes that you find that you love and at least add those to the mix. Cause the more plants you eat, the healthier you are, maybe you start feeling better and then you want to have more of that. And so you do a little more of that and it's a wonderful win-win. But um, I, I don't try to convince them. There's a lot of dietitians that will tell you, oh, yeah, you could eat your burgers and fries. And there's a lot of dietitians that will tell you anything you want to hear. But I know <laughs> that's not going to help them. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Look, whether it's uh, improving your health or anything else in life, if you are not ready to make that change yourself, there is nothing that your family, your friends, anybody can say that can make a difference. You need to make up your own mind to put in that work and to uh, be the vehicle of change to make everything happen. Otherwise, it's just not. You're going to be stuck in place. You're going to keep going up and down the scale, and it can be quite frustrating. But eventually, the good news here is that as we do look toward a healthier new year, um, that change can happen. Like it absolutely positively can happen. You absolutely positively can get to a point when you are ready. And man, let me tell you from experience, Juliana, that is a glorious day when you're finally ready. Yes, I hear you. I've seen it. Congratulations on your success. And I want everyone to know that it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's a journey. I think everyone goes on a journey. And that's that's the whole point is choose you now. You get to decide. You get to decide every single day, several times a day to choose yourself. Let's talk about the this book, the Choose You Now uh, Diet here. I mean, this is this is great, just out. I think that this should be a bestseller. You've already got at least one under your belt, so I see no reason why this shouldn't be another. Um, somebody picks this up. What can they expect? So this is the book I've always wanted to write. It's my seventh book, but it's the one that's most personal to me. I tell my story and it's basically a conclusion or where I am right now after 17 years as a dietitian and 25 plus years in the health and fitness industry. I was a trainer before while I was in graduate school. And so it's a confluence of all of the science that I learned in school and after school, especially, and the conversations that evolved with my clients, because again, we are biological humans, but we are living in, it's all psychosocial. It's, most predominant force to be reckoned with in this world when it comes to food. So basically I have the first few chapters are why and how, what I have learned. And most of this, is, I focus a lot on weight loss because 
I've worked with so so many people come to me for weight loss, and that's kind of become what I do mostly. I work with all sorts of people with all sorts of kind of conditions, but um, this is a, basically a weight loss or tr just a lifestyle transformation program. And then, of course, 75 delicious, nutritious recipes to choose from. I have, I broke my last book, I did soup, salad, sides, and sweets, and these chapters are... Um, uh, let's see, pots, pans, plates, and power bowls, because bowls doesn't start with a P. And um, because I don't care about time of day eating, you don't need to eat breakfast foods at breakfast time or whatever. Like I want people to eat whatever they want. So I just slip, split them up into different types of categories. And there's some really fun recipes that I'm very excited to share in here. Oh uh, yeah. And, and I love it. I love it when somebody is passionate about the recipes that they put together, because for whatever reason, it's like that passion just translates into better taste because it's something that they believe in, that they poured their heart, their soul into. And so why shouldn't everybody reap those rewards? It sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, you can taste the difference if somebody just doesn't care in the kitchen versus somebody that's all in like you are. So um, I'm looking forward to sampling all 75 of these things. I think that they're going to be delicious. And I love the message with the Choose You Now diet. It is something that I wish I knew um, many years ago. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, things would have played out um, a little bit different, a little bit sooner for me. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm grateful that you're getting that message out today. And I'm even more grateful, Juliana, that you were here with us today. And I would be remiss also if we didn't talk about the fact that you have your own podcast, the Choose You Now podcast. I do. I do. We talk all about this, which I have to have you on because I want to hear your story out there and share that with my audience because it's exactly what I love to talk about. I would be honored anytime you want to do it anytime. Let's coordinate schedules and make that happen. Um, I, I would absolutely love it. You're a lot of fun. Likewise. I'm so excited to meet you and thank you for sharing your story with me. And I think you're extraordinary. Thank you so much. And uh, of course, all of the links to everything, the podcast, the book, website, Instagram, Twitter, all of that right now is in the show description. So Juliana, thank you so very much for getting us ready here for a healthy new year. Thank you so much, Chuck, and a happy, healthy new year to all of your listeners. If your health IQ was a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.